In 2024, the U.S. economy heavily relies on massive ships that move about 16,000 containers per minute across the seas. If something were to happen to these ships, it would be catastrophic for our economy. Recently, new rules and unexpected problems have led these ships to avoid American ports, causing chaos for shipping companies and ports. Join us as we look into the essential security measures protecting these ships and keeping our nation's economy running smoothly. The United States is spearheading an initiative, joining forces with 10 other nations to create an international group. The main aim of this group is to protect the large ships that transport various goods across the vast Red Sea. Have you ever paused to consider the current state of the maritime industry, especially the vessels that deliver goods to the United States? There appears to be a noticeable reduction in the number of these gigantic ships, known as container ships, docking at American ports. This decline is particularly evident among the largest types of these ships, known as ultra-large container ships. Remarkably, these enormous vessels have the capacity to carry upwards of 16,000 containers, with each container being as long as a 20-foot room. You might be asking, why is this happening? Not too long ago, a special group in the U.S. government, the House Subcommittee on Transportation and Infrastructure, held a meeting. They wanted to figure out what's happening in the Red Sea, especially after an attack by a group called the Houthis. During this meeting, they talked a lot about safety and the politics around it. But they also kept coming back to one point, infrastructure. Infrastructure means the basic systems and services, like roads and bridges, that a country needs. The fact that they talked about it so much makes us wonder why it's so important for the ships moving through the Red Sea. So, where are all these container ships that travel around the world? A website called Marine Traffic keeps track of all these ships. It shows us where all these big container ships are going across the oceans. Most of these ships start their journey in Asia and take a path across the North Pacific Ocean. They follow a path called the Great Circle Route, which goes up towards the north. If you look at the world as a sphere instead of a flat map, you can see the paths they take more clearly. This way of looking at things helps us understand how ships decide which way to go. The map also shows how ships change their paths to stay away from bad weather. We can see lots of ships coming out of the Straits of Malacca, heading towards South Africa, or moving along the east coast towards the Indian Ocean. In the middle of the extensive web of marine routes, the marine traffic system is particularly interested in tracking the giant container ships, those with a space for more than 16,000 standard 20-foot containers. They're starting a detailed project to track and study these huge ships more closely. This effort is not just about counting ships, it's about understanding the changes and patterns in how these big boats move around the world. Right now, there's a lot of attention on the biggest ships out there, known as ultra-large container vessels. These massive ships usually start their journeys in East Asia and make their way through busy places like the port of Singapore. From there, they pass through the narrow Malacca Straits on their way to Sri Lanka's Colombo Terminal. These ships used to follow a pretty standard path. They'd sail through the Gulf of Aden, slip through the Bab el Mandab Strait, and move up through the Red Sea to reach the Mediterranean Sea. But things have changed. The conflict with the Houthi group has made this usual route risky. As a result, many of these huge ships are now taking a different path. Instead of their usual route, they're gathering in areas like the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. Some are even trying to go around a blockade near the city of Jeddah. Now, many of these ships are taking a longer trip around the southern tip of Africa to reach their European destinations, such as Algeciras in Spain or Tangier in Morocco. There are also other new routes popping up, guiding these giant ships into different parts of the Mediterranean Sea, with stops in places like Genoa in Italy or Piraeus in Greece. An interesting point is that these huge ships are not seen as much along the coastlines of the United States anymore. This change is something that needs more looking into. The recent data, from last month, January, helps us understand how the routes for shipping from Asia to Europe have changed. This data checks out the movements of the big shipping groups, like the 2M Alliance, which includes big names like Maersk and Master of Science, and the Ocean Alliance, with Costco, Evergreen, and CMACGM. When we look at the types of ships these alliances are using, we see some clear patterns. For example, 
the 2M Alliance is using some of the biggest ships out there, with room for between 19,000 and 24,000 standard containers on their Swan line. On the other hand, the Ocean Alliance has slightly smaller ships, but they're still quite large, with room for about 12,700 standard containers. These differences in ship sizes and the routes they're taking are crucial for understanding the current state of global shipping and how it's changing. Next, we look at how big ships have changed over time, growing from small to huge, and how this changes the way we move things around the world. Chapter 2 The Daily Million Dollar Trade The changes in the world of container shipping are big and important. Over time, the ships that carry containers across the sea have become much bigger. This growth shows how ship travel on the ocean has changed and grown. John Paul Rodriguez is an expert on how things get moved around the world and he talks a lot about how container shipping has changed over the years. His research looks back at how containers change the way goods are moved around the world. He talks about how, since the 1950s, these ships have changed a lot, especially with big changes in the 1970s that made them even more important. Initially, the ships that carried these containers were called Panamax ships because they were just the right size to fit through the locks of the Panama Canal, built back in 1944. But then, things started to change in the late 1980s. That's when new, bigger ships called Post Panamax started appearing. These ships were too big to fit through the Panama Canal as it was back then. This change was a big deal because it meant that people had to think differently about how ships move and how ports work. Because these ships were getting so big, ports around the world had to change a lot. They needed bigger cranes to lift the containers off the ships, more room to store all the containers, and deeper water so the bigger ships could come in without getting stuck. These changes weren't just about making things bigger, they were about making everything work better together, from the ships themselves to the ports where they dock. The bigger ships also mean that the people running the ports have to plan more carefully. They have to make sure there's enough space for all the containers and that the big cranes can reach high enough to unload them. Plus, because these new ships sit lower in the water than the old ones, the routes they travel might need to change, too. All of. These changes mean that running a port is a big job that needs a lot of planning and attention to detail. John Paul Rodriguez also talks about how the people who own these big ships are always looking for ways to make more money. The bigger the ship, the more containers it can carry, and the more money the owner can make. This means that these big ships have to keep moving to make money. Rodriguez talks about how the people who own these ships have to make tough decisions about where to send their ships to make the most money. They have to think about things like how much it costs to send a ship to a certain port, how long it takes to get there, and how much money they can make by bringing containers back to where they started. All of these things mean that the people who own these ships are always looking for new and better ways to make money. So, why are we talking so much about these big ships and how they've changed over time? The answer is that these big ships are a big deal. They carry almost everything we buy, from cars to clothes to toys. And because they're so big, they have to keep moving to make money. This means that the people who own these ships have to make tough decisions about where to send their ships and how to make the most money. All of this affects how we get the things we need, how much they cost, and how long it takes for them to get to us. So the next time you buy something, think about how it got to you. Chances are, it came on one of these big ships, and a lot of people worked hard to make sure it got to you safely and on time. With all these changes, the massive container ships have become the backbone of international trade, moving millions of dollars worth of goods daily across oceans. However, the recent shifts in routes and the avoidance of American ports pose challenges that require close attention. This is a glimpse into the intricate world of global trade, where massive vessels play a pivotal role in keeping economies connected across continents.